Uh, hey guys, Barry Megalodidi back for another episode of the Comeback Game podcast. Today I have the messenger of love himself, Preston Smiles, brother. How you doing, man? Oh, oh, I'm good, man. I'm, I'm fired up. I'm excited to be uh, talking to you and the Comeback Tribe crew. Uh, and yeah, man, exciting. It's summertime in LA. Yeah, I was just going to say, for the guys that are watching or listening to this today, whereabouts are you in the world? Yeah, I'm in a place called Playa Vista, actually, which is, you might as well call it Perfectville. I moved to, to it's like legit pleasantville.com. Um, in LA, it's self-contained. Um, in my building upstairs is Facebook. Across the street is Google, YouTube, Honest Company, Yahoo, IMAX. And then inside of where we live, because it's all facing inward, is Whole Foods, movie theater, hospital, 12 restaurants, 10 parks, uh, five swimming pools, that whole thing, like gyms, the whole thing. And it all faces in, inward. So it's like a gated community that's not gated. Um, yeah. It's a sort of community where everyone knows everyone. Yeah. 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 You walk. <laughs> you, you, never, you never get in your car. Like everything... Even my office, I could I walk or bike here. Yeah, yeah. So, mate, super pumped to have you on today. Before we kick off, for uh, the many people out there that are watching and listening to this today that probably don't know who you are, tell us a bit more about you. Well, screw you for not knowing who I am. Um, number two. <laughs> <laughs> number two. Um, I'll, I'll start with what's really true, like a fact. Um, I am a unique emanation of the Most High. I am love in a space. I consider myself to be a sexy chocolate drop um, and, <laughs> and, and on purpose with many purposes, just like yourself. So we're all twins, twinsies. Um, and what I do in the world, how I support humanity is through facilitating workshops. Uh, we have a workshop called The Bridge Ex and Extreme Leadership, which Barry mm -hmm. has been an all-star in. Um, I have and do men's work. I have a company called Conscious Man Brotherhood, where we support men in a, a program called Man Cave and Unleash the Beast. And I have just pivoted my business to supporting coaches. And so, because I've been in the coaching game and doing all of this work for 14 years now. Mm -hmm. And in the last couple of years, it became a million dollar business. And just really went there, man. Like I've been, I've been doing this for quite a while and I, all of it is done for one reason and one reason only. And that is to remind people of the one truth, which is love is all there is, was, and ever will be. Everybody mm -hmm. has the same message. Everybody has the same message, which is love. And uh, some of us make it more detailed and niched, but it's still the same thing, which is a reminder. And mm -hmm. that's a part of my deal for mm -hmm. why I came here. Mm -hmm. So where did it all start? Like you mentioned 14 years you've been doing this. Where did it all start for you? Like where did that message of the calling come in? Yeah. Um, I think like probably many people listening to this or watching it, um, I didn't choose it. It chose me. And it started with me. I mean, we could say it started when I was 11, when, I, when my dad caught me smoking weed and uh, <laughs> sat me down and, and told me that he, he asked me to look at everybody who smokes weed and he's going to give me 48 hours to decide whether I want their life. And if I want wow. their life, I could keep smoking and he wouldn't stop me. Um, but if I don't want their life, then I could make a new choice. And at the end of that 48 hours, he said, you're a leader. Um, and you're also a boy. And I know you're going to do stupid things. But you're such a leader that if everybody else is going right and some part of you says go left, you'll go left no matter what. And my dad spoke into me and breathe life into the seed, right? Because we, we all understand that the seed contains the blueprint for the entire tree. Um, mm. some, some seeds turn into trees that grow thousands of feet in the air, while other seeds turn into trees that barely make it out of the ground. The mm. distinction and the difference between a tree that provides life and shade and grows to its potential and one that doesn't is the soil that it is planted in. And so my father, in the midst of all of his breakdowns and ridiculous traumas that he placed on me as well, really became a soil for me to remember who and what I am. Now, fast forward to 25 years old, sitting in a cardiologist's office, 
um, where I was told that I would probably be taking heart medicine for the rest of my life. Um, I didn't want to die. Um, many people in my family have, have died from heart attacks. Um, and at 25, that's, that's a rude awakening. And mm. that sort of opened up the space for me to take another look and reflect just like I did when I was 11 and look at if I want the same life as my grandmother and my dad and all the people who are in my neighborhood and all the people I see, this is before the internet, um, then I should probably eat like them. I should probably think like them. I should probably do the same things they do. And if I don't want that life, then I maybe need to reflect. And that's what makes us awesome as humans. We have reflective consciousness. That's the, what makes us different than let's say a, a donkey um, mm -hmm. is we can think to four years ago or whatever the case may be. And so I began to reflect on my life and right at that time, the secret came out and uh, my girlfriend at the time, her mother gave me a book called Ask and It Is Given by Jerry and Esther Hicks. And even, mm -hmm. though, even though I was dyslexic, I was so scared uh, that I decided to read it. And there's a line in there that said, your thoughts become things and you create your own reality. And I remember dropping the book out of so much anger and astonishment at the same time because I had a master's degree from Louisiana State University. I had been through a lot of college and I had never ever heard those words. Right mm -hmm. now, it's commonplace, right? We, everything on the internet is like, you create your reality. Mm -hmm. In some ways, Barry, and I know you teach this, um, this is what we would call second stage consciousness. Mm -hmm. There's four, four stages or four levels of consciousness. First one being to me, to me consciousness, the world's happening to me. I'm a victim. Oh, it's the government. It's Trump. It's my girlfriend. It's the economy. It's this. It's that. It's the real estate market. It's whatever you want to put on that. Mm -hmm. Second stage is the Gary V. Hustle Hard, uh, Grant Cardone, like I create it, right? By me. So to me, by me. I create my reality, which is mm -hmm. what I stepped into. In that process, I discovered the third and fourth stage. Third stage is through me consciousness. Mm -hmm. This is where you become a vessel, a beacon, a light. You, you surrender the idea of what you think you should be doing and mm -hmm. listen to and allow the medicine in your heart to come through and be um, a, a beacon for people mm -hmm. in the shadows. And mm -hmm. so that's where I stepped. And then the last one is as me consciousness, which is the Christ consciousness, the Buddha nature, the, the, that understanding that all is one. And... Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, none of these we graduate from and never go back to the other. I was in victim consciousness probably an hour ago and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then jumped back up. So, yeah, that's what I got. That's what I got, bro. I so much other yeah. stuff, you know, being placed in special education and watching people die bloody deaths with their brains splattered out in front of me. And I've been through a lot of stuff. Um, all of those things mm. helped me become the messenger of love and uh, help other people turn their, their pain into their power, their mess into their message and really own what it means to be them. Yeah. So you've, you've been uh, teaching, uh, expressing, educating, allowing this for the last 14 plus years. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine that, uh, no, even that someone that's where you are right now, would have had their fair share of ups and downs over the past 14 years. And something that we see a lot, you know, I ran a workshop on the weekend with my partner is that a lot of people have that experience where life is happening to them, mm -hmm. but they're, they're a product of their circumstances and their environment and not able to see yes. the, the uniqueness that they have to create and consciously create their future. Boom. Can we quick talk about for a moment, like what have been some of the biggest things you've had to overcome in the past 14 odd years to be, sitting here today with me right now? Oh man, we can go down the list, but I'll start with, and this is something I remind myself all the time. Those who are willing to risk it all position themselves to gain it all. And so what I've had to be with is my relationship with risk. Um, because a lot of us are emotional and have a lot to say, but we're still on the sidelines. We're not risking anything. We're afraid. We're talking. We're getting ready to get ready. And so the declaration 
And I'll, I'll give you a funny story because this ended up being hilarious. When I first started, I did what everybody else does, which is you look for boxes to fit in. I said, oh, well, maybe I need to be a motivational speaker, right? And so I went to a couple of different conferences and I went to one and he upselled to another conference, uh, which was in uh, <laughs> Houston, Texas. And so I bought, I bought that one and uh, I went to Houston, Texas and it was this guru on the stage and he said, does anybody want to stand up and share what their thing is? And it's for motivational speaking. And I said, well, uh, I haven't really gotten started yet, but for me, my truth is, is that love is all there is, was, and ever will be. I created a organization called the Love Mob, where we do organized acts of love. And I've had, you know, up to a thousand people show up in a space and sing the Beatles, all you need is love. And we've done all this stuff. And he looked at me, sort of looked me up and down, paused for a second. And he said, nobody will ever buy love. You need to be a peak performance speaker or a, uh, what was it? A um, self-esteem speaker, right? So, or leadership, that's what it was. Peak performance or leadership. There we go. And I mean, he literally shat on my dream right there. And then, and I just was like in shock because I'm a kid. I don't really understand this industry or whatever. So uh, I sort of left with, defeated and one of the guys who was there in the audience with me was a little further in the game. And he said, you know what? I'll coach you. Give me $1,500. I'll fly to LA and I'll coach you and I'll help you through this. So, fuck, okay. Give him the $1,500. He flies to LA. We sit down and he says, yeah, you need to be, you need to call yourself America's number one self-esteem coach. And this is the lesson, Barry, and this is a gang, it, it gets really even funnier in a second. So I took that on. I called myself Preston Smiles, America's number one self-esteem coach, right? Like terrible, bro. And it felt so out of alignment. And I'm sure there's some people in here who are doing some things that don't feel like you, right? And so it felt so out of alignment that I made a decision maybe two weeks in that if I was gonna fail, I was gonna fail on my own terms. If I was gonna fall, I was gonna fall forward, right? Which is that risk thing. Yeah. So I threw all that out the window and I said, fuck it. I'm going to do what I do. I'm going to say what I say. I'm going to go where I need to go and I'll figure it out. And um, two years later, that same guy who stood on that stage and told me nobody will buy love. And this is after me speaking on stages of 6,500 people. This is after me being booked multiple times for 12, 15 K right. Without an agent, without a bureau, Right? Like literally two years later, this dude comes back and hires me as his coach. <laughs> Legit. And I coach him through social media and what to say and how to say it and to get to his truth. And for me, there was a moment of like pure vengeance. Like, oh, you asshole, you shit on my dream. But all of it was so perfect and I'm so grateful for him. So that's one example of many in this yeah. ever unfolding journey called uh, entrepreneurial show. Yeah. Dude, you've, you've worked like literally all over the world with thousands of people over the past years. Um, what do you see as being the most common thread between everyone that shows up in your rooms mm -hmm. that, that, that you feel holds them back from their greatness? Mm. Yeah, uh, I, it's clear, it's easy most people aren't living the life that is true for them. They're, they're trying to get it right for mommy and daddy. They're trying to get it right for those people that called them a faggot when they were nine. They're trying to get it right based on the Victoria's Secret models that they see. Whatever the case may be, it's, uh, most people are trying to live a life that they think. Um, are you still here with me? Yeah. There we go. Uh, that they think is what society deems good enough and so and, and that is all tied to worthiness like and and that's tied to true ownership which is why i call myself a personal freedom coach because most people go into business thinking oh when i get the car when i make my first 100k when i x y and z whatever that is fill in the blank then i'll be happy then i'll be secure then i'll have it finally figured out 
And most people get to that point and realize that it's bullshit. And mm -hmm. even if they do, and I've met multiple people who make at least 20 million a year who are poor, they're mm -hmm. slaves. They are fucking slaves. And that, that's not freedom. They're mm -hmm. slaves to the money. They're slaves mm -hmm. to, the, to the game. And to me, what I coach and what I support and what I stand for is actual real personal freedom where you stand in your power no matter what. Not mm -hmm. I stand in my power when I have the suit, when I have the watch, when I have the girl. No, I stand in my power knowing that I am a unique emanation of the most high, whatever I call the most high, I'm a unique emanation of that thing. Mm -hmm. Understanding that I, I'm unique but not special. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think they're special. A lot of people on the internet try to paint a picture that they're special. Nobody's special in this thing. We're all unique. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I love that. And, and in many cases, when they, when they do get that thing, that girl, that car, they, mm -hmm. they realize they're more lost than ever before because they've strived and they've put so much emphasis on what it means to achieve that. Yep. They ultimately, what they're ever looking for, only and ever looking for is the feeling of what they perceive it will give them. That, that, you know what, bro? Here's another one to add to that, because hell yes. Most of us grew up hearing a question that was one of the most detrimental questions we, anybody could ask us, and we heard it over and over and over again. You want to guess what that question is? What do you want to be when you grow up? Boom. Worst question you could ever ask a seven-year-old, and, yeah. then, and then an eight-year-old, then a nine-year-old, then a 14-year-old. Then, a, oh, it's getting close to college time. What do you want to be? What do you want to major in? Because that's going to be the thing. And you got to land on that thing because that's your purpose. Bullshit, 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 bullshit. Yeah. Well, there's a presupposition that who we're being is not good enough as we are. That. The presupposition that we need to get somewhere mm -hmm. to arrive at our purpose. But I don't, I don't know if we ever arrive at our purpose. Ever. I think that you know, who we are and who we stand as today and what our purpose is today may be very different to what it is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And it's only through connecting in with that version of ourselves, with that connection to God and source that we can truly allow ourselves to be that vessel where, where that works through us, that purpose works through us. A thousand percent. I will only caveat that by saying, and I agree with you 100% with this caveat, we're always on purpose. There isn't a time where we aren't. And it's, I, I usually give the metaphor to my clients where it's like, okay, you're in um, Los Angeles and you want to fly to New York. A lot of people, what they do is they get on the plane and start trying to head to, let's say, Texas, right? Because they think, oh, I got to get a college degree first. So I'm going to stop there. Mm -hmm. And while they're there, they think, oh, none of this really matters until I'm there. Mm -hmm. And they get on another flight. And on the flight, they meet somebody and that sends them up to Idaho. And then they think, oh, this is it. We're going to get married. We're going to have kids. And then they break up and they go, oh, waste of time. I should have never done that. I'm still at, not at my purpose. And then they get on another flight, headed to New York, and it gets diverted and the winds take it somewhere else. Well, the whole time they were collecting. And while they were collecting, it was all a part of the journey mm. of being on your purpose. Mm -hmm. So it would be like the person who goes to DJ school when they know that they want to be a, let's say, um, motivational speaker, right? The idea would be like, oh, I wasted my time in DJ school. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Because what happens when you create something that's, you know, multi-leveled and has that a part of it, but you, you can't even guess that. And sometimes you need, only need to go to DJ school to meet your best friend. Mm -hmm. Or to meet your, you know, the person whose sister is the person you're going to end up marrying, mm. right? Like, but, but we can't, we can't control that. And so we're never out of our purpose. We're always mm. in that process. Even if you just sit on a mountaintop for five years, you're still on purpose. Because mm. God, in my opinion, source never made a mistake. And so mm. he didn't make a mistake with the beard, the, 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 the hairs in your beard, nor did it make a mistake if you decide to sit on a mountaintop. Mm. How do you feel that that works when it comes down to decision making, you know, and that per perception that people have that they made a wrong decision, yet the, the interesting thing is 
they only they only arrive at that perception once they've actually made a decision mm-hmm. and hindsight kicks in the perception of being able to look back is is available to them yes 100 percent. it yeah it assumes that there's a thing called failure right so if you take failure out of the vocabulary then any decision is within the isness that is what we call life and so if i'm here now talking to you we could say barry uh i made a wrong decision by going to i have a new tesla and i drove to go try to get it charged, but there was a long line of Teslas. So I could say, I made a wrong decision by getting off the freeway in that moment, because I could have had more time to prepare for this podcast with Barry. Well, no, it was the perfect decision, because if I didn't make that decision and I made another one, I could have gotten into a car accident, I could have a million things, right? Every decision we do is like a butterfly effect. And if I'm breathing and uh, I have a smile on my face right now, and uh, if I really want water, I can go get it and I have clothes on my back and people who love me, then I'm pretty sure that I'm living the dream. Like mm. I, if I really look around, I'm, I'm on some 1% type stuff. And anybody listening to this podcast is a one percenter. Mm. You know? Until mm. you've spent time, and I have, in the middle of India or Africa in places where they don't have clean water mm. or a actual toilet or things like that, it puts things into perspective, right? Our first world sort of privileged problems, while they are problems, perspective wise, they're not. Mm. And and I think it's really helpful to start to take the 50,000 foot view on our lives as much as possible and run like, like, what's what's true? Is this this really real? Is this a capital T truth or a lowercase t? Is this a freaking fact or is this an opinion that I'm making feel like a fact? It's mm-hmm. an opinion and I'm holding it like a fact. That mm-hmm. gets people in trouble all the time. And it's one of the reasons why going back to, and I watched this video the other day of Grant Cardone and he said something that literally like just rocked me again. He said, it's never the best business that wins. It's the most known. Hmm. And I think that a lot of people probably even listening and watching this podcast right now are trying to be the best. And Hmm. they're trying to be the best that they can be safe. If I'm Hmm. better than everybody else, then the people will come. Meanwhile, there's somebody who's just as good, maybe not as good, but they're willing to risk looking stupid, putting themselves out there, putting their money where their mouth is. And when if the economy crashes that tree in the woods that's really good it's a good tree it knows how to it got all the certificates it got all the certifications it went to x y and z nobody still knows that tree fell meanwhile yeah. the tree that has no certifications the one that has been in the game willing risking falling failing falling forward is the one that makes it through now mm. that's to me why i have a million dollar coaching business because i'm willing to go where everybody else isn't i'm willing mm. to everybody else says and i'm willing to go the extra mile understanding that there is no traffic along it Mm. right i can play like everybody else plays and i'll get what everybody else gets if you really want to take your life your business and everything to the next level you Mm. begin to to um, get a little more dangerous in your choices and that danger Mm. is a lowercase d because there is no real Mm. danger barry Mm. preston and anybody else listening if if we lost everything, the only thing we would do is cry for a day and make it all back. Mm. We, we, we are so blessed, all mm. of us. We can just like, just figure it out. Mm. Take out a loan, borrow some money, work at a freaking restaurant, do whatever we have to do, but we'll just make it back. Mm. It's resilience, right? And, and it's that, that habit and that state of behavior that we learn to fall forward. You mentioned that you don't unlearn that shit. Mm-hmm. You know, like, like I'd much rather seek for progress than perfection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's, there's two things, two questions that come up. Uh, one, I want to touch on money for a second. Then two, I want to dive into relationships because I know this is something that you and I both uh, love to chat about. The first one is for those, like we get a lot of people rocking up to work with us that are in pretty tragic positions financially. Like they've accumulated a, a shitload of debt with the ATO 
uh, the Australian Tax Office over here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was the IRS. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, their business is just not doing the sales they should. They work ridiculous hours. Like, what would you say to those people that, are, that, that their experience of life is that they haven't got enough, that there's not enough finances flowing through mm. uh, their personal bank account and their business bank account? Yes. I'd say that the universe, God, Buddha, Jesus, Krishna, whatever you want to call it, is saying, and so it is. I believe that the universe always says yes, literally always. There is no other yes. answer than yes every time. And so if you say not enough, then you get to experience that. In conversations with God, there was a line that changed my life seven years ago. He said, you cannot have what you want, but you may experience what you have. I literally think mm-hmm. about this every day. I can't have what I want, but I may experience, ooh, abundance. Yes, it's here. Love is here. Oh my God. Yes, I do have some debt with the whatever office there is. However, in this now moment, I'm at Starbucks and when I reached into my wallet to give a card, I was able to pay for a drink. Whoa, mm. blessed. Hashtag blessings. Now in yeah. that moment, I get to have more of that. And that becomes attractive. That becomes a magnet. That becomes the thing that creates more space for more of it. Sufficiency, gratefulness, abundance. That dance is all created through a frequency of, and a perception, right? Because they're all playing with each other. The more I perceive, the more my frequency raises, the more my frequency raises, the more I perceive and begin to see. I have my clients do something. uh, We do a 10 day God goggles challenge. God goggles is where you see the face of God in absolutely everything. And I challenge them to play that game. And then we do another 30 days of joy alarms. Every time the alarm goes off, you get up, you dance, woo, you celebrate, you go crazy just for no reason. And what that happens is is people come back and they go, bro, I literally had people just reaching out to me out of nowhere. I started getting clients coming to me. The tides changed. Yeah. And so this is, it's a frequency game, bro. You get it. You already get I, it. I, I, shared, I shared with someone on the weekend at this workshop. It's like, how could you ever appreciate that that you wish to create mm-hmm. if you're not first appreciating that that you've already created now? Yes, indeed. You know, like this perception of like, if I earn more money, if I get that card, then I'll be happy. Well, you're not happy now. Mm-hmm. So how is your state of being going to change through receiving more of what you've already got, yep. more of what you've already created? Yeah. One hundred percent. Love that. All right, let's let's touch on relationships, dude. Mm-hmm. Now, you obviously uh, have got a phenomenal relationship with your beautiful partner, Alexi. Mm-hmm. You guys are lucky enough and fortunate enough, and have chosen to travel around the world, uh, impacting thousands of people's lives. Uh, that comes with its challenges. Mm-hmm. I I imagine, and I know, uh, in a very similar position. Let's talk about like how do you think that you culminate like incredible purpose-driven relationships with the intimate other because i think next to finances the second biggest thing we see is is trauma in relationships Mm -hmm. and these toxic relationships that people have Mm -hmm. unknowing uneducated on how to make them the way they want them to be Mm, yeah um so there's something i want to share about the first thing which instantly goes into the second thing it's the same principle um any program that i have we do the same thing which is we decide to give up a vice for 90 days. Um, And the principle is give up to go up, give up to grow up. A lot of people don't understand that there is a give and take, an ebb and flow that's happening in the universe and and take universe and let's just say happening in their life. Mm -hmm. And let's say that I have a business, but I also have accumulated some debt with the tax office. And within that business, I drive a Mercedes and I have HBO on my TV and all the premium channels. I go to the bars every weekend and have a few drinks with my boys. Uh, I take a trip to Spain twice a year. And now I'm talking to this guy, Barry, and I'm saying, ah, it's just not enough. I don't, know how to, I don't know how to get on the other side of this. Well, uh, if I was coaching that person, I would remind them that there are some things that need to be let go of for now. And it, it's the principle, and I made a YouTube video about this 
uh, called how I, how I went from 60 K to 600 K in under uh, three years. And it's the same principle. I began to give up things, taking a few steps back, understanding that I was going to be taking a lot of steps forward. So my $2,300 apartment, when I was making 60 K, I let that apartment go, moved in with my mom, took some of that money, invested it in coaching and mentorship, stopped going out, stopped drinking, stopped X, Y, and Z, just bang, 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 bang. All of these things, moved them out of the way and to the side. I reached out to every one of my friends who I knew was not a conducive friendship as far as an everyday hanging kind of thing to help me go where I was headed and needing to go. And so I reached out to him. I said, I love you so much and I'm going to be gone for a little while. Right? So now this is, this is subtraction to create addition. And it's the same thing in relationship. When we look at our relationships, a lot of times there's an underlying dream that's happening. And so the, the mm, what's the word? The surface level conversations, the surface level triggers, the surface level like, ah, oh, this person's so annoying. They don't get me. They don't have my back or, ah, oh, this person's not growing as much as me. Oh, they don't have as much entrepreneurship. Ah, oh, they spend money differently. Ah, oh, they just waste money getting their car washed or they waste money buying bags and all of these things, right? Underneath all of that, everybody has a dream. And a lot of times we assume because we're in partnership that our partner shares the same brain as us. And... Um, I was sharing with a friend the other day that I'm in the process of learning how to actually love the surrender and the compromise of relationship because everybody compromises in relationship, but can you love it? Can you appreciate it? Right. I used to, um, I was learning how to play the guitar and somebody told me, if you learn how to play the 12 bar blues, you'll be able to play like 150 songs. Right. And so I limited it and compromised all the other things I could have been learning with guitar in, in order to learn the 12 bar blues so that I could play No Woman, No Cry and Incubus and all these other things. And that's the same principle that I do in relationship right now. It's what you're doing. I'm sacrificing and learning to love the sacrifice, love the surrender, love the overlapping dance that we're doing in our relationship understanding that the sacrifice appears to be a sacrifice but it's really just a few steps back to take 150 forward because our nervous systems are synced up and our job in a relationship is to protect each other's nervous systems to actually be a it is an organism right so barry is is himself and then your partner is herself and then you guys together is an organism how you protect the organism, how you make the organism thrive is by protecting the other stuff. Not saying, oh, you get to keep your wounds, but by saying, ah, I see that you're being with something. How do I make this easier for you? Hmm. The easier it is for you, sacrifice, the better it is for me and us. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. I, I think there's, there's something quite powerful in there too. You know, when we look at, abundance versus scarcity mindset mm -hmm. is that a lot of people aren't willing to make that sacrifice because they have a perception they're going backwards yes there's a perception of like what will others think of me if i'm now living with my mother yes. what will others think of me if i'm not going out and drinking on the weekend mm. and they're, they're disempowering themselves yep. at 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 the the helms of someone else mm -hmm. Rather than realizing, well, I'm, I'm the, the, the captain of my own ship. I'm in control right now. I'm actually choosing mm -hmm. to take those steps backwards. Those steps backwards aren't choosing me. Boom. I'm choosing to take those steps backwards the same as I'll then choose to take those steps forwards. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it assumes that those people will think that or say yeah. that. And it's still trying to protect. Right? There's, there's really only three desires, three wants in the whole world. Approval, control and security. Security, also we call it relational security, financial security, uh, job security. Yeah. This safety is a part of the animal. It's, it's what's kept our species alive for so long. And um, now that there's no more saber-toothed saber tigers in the bushes, the new security is if you don't approve of me, then you won't love me. Mm. All of that is an outside end game. Mm. 
if you don't approve of me, then I'm not safe. If I'm not safe, I'll be an outcast. You won't love me. I won't make money, X, Y, and Z. I won't be able to have kids. Fill in the blank. Mm. It's all an outside end game. Mm. All of it. Those who live extraordinary lives, flip it. It's an inside out game. They, they provide their own security, their own approval, and understanding that everything that can be in control is in control. Mm. When I don't think that I'm safe, I'll, I'll control it by what I wear, what I say and don't say, where I live and don't live, the, 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 the churches I go to, the, the, all those decisions are based on those three core desires, those three core ones. And so mm. somebody who is living an extraordinary life literally stops. And this is something I teach. It's something I do all the time. We'll stop and say, ah, I'm feeling some dissonance, right? So there's some emotions here in this moment, right? And I, I check in probably 30 times a day. What am I experiencing? Mm, a little tight, Oof, a little frustrated. Okay, what's, what's been happening? Oh, I was believing a thought that unless I got this coaching program out by September, that uh, somebody else would beat me to it. Ooh, interesting. That is an outside in game. Mm. I'm, I'm banking my security, right? Because that's what I'm really saying under beat me to it. If you beat me to it, I won't have enough money hmm. and I will therefore get the approval of being this, you know, person in the industry. Hmm. And so, fuck, all right, I'm going to control this then. I'm going <clears> to <throat> do everything so that I, I win. Hmm. And even when I win, do I really win anything? Because hmm. all of it was an outside in game. I'm still a slave. So what I do is I catch it and go, ah, oh, okay. That, that's causing frustration. That's causing some fear and some anxiety. Let me stop for a moment and really see what's true here with a capital T. What's true is, is whether I put it out in September, October, or freaking 20 years from now, I'm still perfect, whole, and complete, but not finished. In this now moment, what's true as a fact is in this now moment, when I really look at my life, who I've been and where I am in this now moment, I actually approve of me. Hmm. I value who I am as a human. And then I check in, oh, is everything that can be in control in control? Yeah, it is. Awesome. Then every need I've ever wanted is met in this now moment. Hmm. And I allow myself to celebrate. I jump, I laugh. I dance, I change my physiology and my neurology. And in doing so, my brain sends a signal from my brain to my body, which is called neuropeptides, that uh, abundance is here. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then I feel that in the body. Like when I was 25, I looked like I was probably 48. And now I'm, I'll be 40 next year and I look like I'm fucking 25. And so to me, that is a for sure, for sure um, example of mind over matter in some ways. Like my, my mindset is creating a matter that it makes me and it makes me feel a certain type of way. I feel younger now mm. at 39 than I do and did at 22. Yeah. More energy, better sex, better everything, more money, the whole thing. Winning. Hashtag winning. Hashtag winning. Dude, so for the guys and girls that are watching or listening to this today, what are your three bits of advice to live a purpose, prosperous, mm. and incredible life? Yes. Ah. Number one, don't forget to have fun. We've been so serious. Like we've become way too serious. Yeah. You don't have to be super serious in order to be successful. Success also, and this is number two, define it and then design it. This is number two. Have fun no matter what. Then define what success really is to you. A lot of people are chasing money and symbols without really understanding what is enough. Like mm. people say, oh, I want to be a millionaire. Well, why? Mm. What does that mean to you? Is it really that you need a million or is it that you could, you live the same lifestyle? And I'll tell you full transparency, Barry, million dollar business, 
I keep maybe 100, 150. When I was making 400, 500, I was keeping like 250, right? So like you can scale, but scale in cost. Mm. And at what cost? What do, you, what do you really want? What kind of lifestyle do you want to live? Define it, then design it. Yeah. That's number two. Define design. Number three, make sure that you spend time with, love on, and have relationships with those people who you deem family. Because mm -hmm. that's one of the biggest regrets of the dying is that they didn't actually spend more time with those who they love the most. Mm -hmm. Like the thing you're, you can get so caught up chasing something for a lifetime and miss the people that are right next to you. Yeah. Right. Like don't, don't forget why we're here. Like mm -hmm. a part of that, we are social beings. We're born from another into a world with others. Community is the new money. Make sure that you have community and friends and you have fun with them and you love on them and you cry with them and you actually enjoy it. That's the game. Mm. Boom. <laughs> Preston smiles, man. So good to catch up with you and uh, have you sprinkle some of your gold in amongst the comeback game nation. Uh, yes, how can the guys and girls find you? How can they connect with you? At Preston smiles on everything at Preston smiles on Instagram, on YouTube and Facebook. All of those work and PrestonSmiles.com. Um, I'm, I do quite a bit on Instagram and uh, yeah, YouTube and Facebook actually. So just any of those three, whatever is your platform, catch me there. And, and I can say too that if uh, anyone has the opportunity of attending either your bridge or extreme leadership, totally do that. Yep. Uh, it's an absolute game changer and by far one of the, if not the best uh, workshops and courses that I've ever done as well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll be in Australia in November. So, uh, for those of you guys who want to get in the, get in the dojo and see what you're made of bridgeexperience.com. Awesome. Thanks Preston. Appreciate your time, brother. If you're in a position that many of our clients were before joining us, which is that your business is controlling you rather than you controlling your business, we would love to have a chat to you to see whether or not we might be the right fit to partner with you to help you grow and succeed in business. Over the past eight years, we've helped hundreds of business owners around the world to grow, scale and succeed in business. Uh, many of our clients report we've helped them to triple their profits and double their time off in 12 months or less. If you jump onto YouTube and notice the hundreds of testimonies, you'd see that this is a common theme amongst them. If you're a business owner that's generating more than $300,000 a year in annual revenue, uh, whether it's 500 million, five million, even $10 million a year, and you're looking to take your business and your life to the next level, we might be able to help. If you're noticing that your business is lacking structure, maybe systems or processes, maybe you're not quite attracting enough or, or the right type of quality leads, making enough sales, or maybe you've been having issues finding, hiring, retaining, and training the right team members, we could be a fit for you. Ultimately, we believe that we never have business problems, we have personal problems that are expressed through our business. And a lot of the work we do is with you as a business owner, helping you to constantly upgrade the way that you see life, the way that you make decisions, and the way that you help construct a profitable and purpose-driven business. In order for us to do that though, you need to book in a quick, a uh, 15 minute application call with one of our scaling specialists here at The Game Changers. Through the 15 minute call, we're gonna ask you a bunch of questions to see if or how we might better help you. If we can't help you, we'll let you know politely and do our best to point in the direction of someone that can. However, if we can help you, we'll look at booking you an, a one hour game plan session where we're gonna dive a lot deeper into where you and your business are at right now, where it is that you want to go in the next three, five, and 10 years time, and what are the potential roadblocks or challenges or even opportunities that are along the journey in order for you to get there uh, faster. If you're really feeling that it's time for you to, to experience the love and the joy of running a business again, if you're really wanting to experience a business that does actually operate without you while still producing profit, uh, we may very well be the right fit. So book in a 15 minute call, we can have a chat and uh, see where we go from there. My name is Barry Baduti and uh, thanks for listening. Hopefully we get a chance to talk soon.